five months into the kindergarten admissions process and things are heating up. There are only two more weeks before the private schools decide which children they'll accept. All over the city, preschool directors are starting to get feedback from the schools. How are you? Sorry to keep you waiting. Barry and Stephanie are about to find out what Jack's chances are. What do you want to start with? Dalton. I can tell you right now it's not happening. But over 700 applications, just to put it into perspective. Okay, so Columbia Grammar. Okay, they, they thought he seemed kind of young and a little silly on the interview, but very sweet. And his small motor coordination wasn't fabulous, did an okay picture. His ERBs were great, but on whole they found him young. I mean, when you, when you realize the numbers, it's just startling. Um, you know, 400 kids applying for 25 spots. Alan Stevenson. Young. When there's just one comment, young. I mean, where does he fall then in, in the competition game with everybody else? Like, could he get a letter that it, from a school accepting him? Where Unlikely. Is Unlikely, yeah. Unlikely. So what it means is you have to think about what your options are. I mean, we'll finish talking about all the schools. But for example, he could go to public school, obviously. Or um, he could stay here another year. Or we could work as hard as we can to get him into the school that's the most interested, but maybe not your first choice. And then who else is left? Browning. Curious, verbal, young, active, lots of personality, loved parents. Loved parents, what's that mean? What, did he have You're a... such a flower lady? child. They love both of you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that's Browning? Yeah. That's cool. First of all, I like the, I love the school. And then it's 12th grade. It's like, okay, we're set. He's in. Hopefully Hank will be in. And then we don't have to worry about this. We, uh, not, because I, uh, just the thought of going through it in nine years from now, again, through the whole process again, is like, no, I don't want to do this. Okay, so we're, we're, we're nowhere, but we have a direction. Right. Well, okay. no, I mean, we're not nowhere, but we're not. We're not at a Don't say that, Wendy. That we're not well, I, I just want you to think that because we decided this now, yeah, I know. it's solid. It's not. I have, still have to negotiate. Okay. Preschool directors really end up doing something that's called brokering. They have to explain to the parents that some kids are going to be able to get into the top schools and some aren't. And at the same time, they have to talk to the schools themselves and convince them that the kids that they're recommending are terrific kids and will be wonderful for their school. Now it's Kristen's turn to get the feedback on Caleb from preschool director Marlene Barron. Two privates are impressed with his intelligence, but are raising other questions. Everyone sees him as very, very, very bright. There's no, that's not, not anyone's question. The issue is uh, more around his behavior at interviews. I think the one-on-ones he did better. Oh. Was, was Browning a one-on-one? Yes, one-on-one, -on -one, I knew that would be better. Yes, or, or I knew better. that would be better. Yeah, his I see. Better. His small groups were not. Yes, if it was Browning, I would be very happy. I felt as soon as I walked in there that like. Well, I, there's another school that's interested. They came yesterday. They spent time in the room. Yeah, were they worried afterward? No. Well, no, they weren't so worried afterward. So I shouldn't be too frightened? You should worry, yes. I should, should worry? I mean, we had it managed. He's going to require someone who loves him, you know, they, because it's going to be. There's no love <laughs> in all But, these I mean, they're going to have to. This is the last uh, love you get after this. Yeah, but they have to kind of, you know, I know that he's going to, you know, he can be a little um, defiant. Yeah. Kira's also heard important news from her preschool director. Cathedral, a private school, is very interested in Amina. I would be really happy with her at Cathedral. The only thing that is kind of making me nervous is just, you know, with the financial aid and how that'll work out. Ideally, we don't want to be paying more than we're paying for preschool now. And now we're paying like $11,000 a year, which is a lot. It's like, honestly, I don't know how people can have more than two kids. I don't even know how we can have two kids. <laughs> like, I'm just very, very thankful that we're young and we've got a lot of working years left in us because we're gonna need to use them all up to pay for these two. It's a week before the privates make their decision. Kristen's been told that the Browning School is serious about Caleb. Hi, um, I'm wondering if it's possible to talk to Marlene. I, I'm, I'm about to like deliver a first choice letter to a school, but I, I, I wanted her advice before I did it. 
the letter commits Kristen and Caleb to Browning. But it's a gamble. The first choice letter is a commitment that if the school takes you, you will go to the school. And some of the schools make it quite clear that unless they get a first choice letter, that child is not going to be in their uh, take pile. On the other hand, it doesn't mean they're going to take the child. Kristen's parents are visiting, and her mother is helping her decide what she should wear to deliver the letter to Browning. It's full of stains. This is really sad. I only brought a couple things. I got a pair of corduroy pants. They're going to realize they've made a terrible mistake, <laughs> but it'll be too late. They're going to say, oh, no, she's not our kind of people after all. What have we done? So is this a real hoity-toity place? Yes. That, that's what you're saying? He's got to wear a jacket and tie. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Are you serious? It's perfect for him. Oh, Kristen. <laughs> No child not should have to do that. Not until it's first grade. For kindergarten, he just has to wear the jacket. He doesn't have to wear a tie. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's a form of child abuse. I, I really do. I mean, I didn't see a lot of this up, you know, up close and personal. I would just hear things, and I would say it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. So she, she sort of stopped talking to me about it a little bit because she knew my reaction would just be... This is insanity. Why don't you come home to Milwaukee, where we have public schools that people can go to <laughs> free? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I can't believe my daughter's turned out this way. <laughs> so you're going to need an entire new wardrobe. Kristen can dress the part for Browning, but she can't afford it unless the school offers her 80% of its tuition. I think that Browning would be perfect, and they would be able to keep him calm and focused and give him attention and engagement that he needs. But if I had to pay very much, it would be really hard. On the other side of town, Wendy Levy has news. Browning is also very interested in Jack Bricken. Steph? Hi, it's Wendy. I'm good, how are you? Great. So here's what I think, if I were you, I would first choice Browning. Okay, so what do I do? Do I hand, do I hand deliver a letter tomorrow? I think they should get the letter today. So fax them uh, a first choice letter today and then hand drop it off first thing tomorrow morning. And you just need to be short and succinct saying that you love the school and if accepted, you will come uh, gladly. I feel like better. I, was, I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack this morning. Coming up, eight months of anxiety come to an end as the letters from the schools arrive. None of these look very promising at all. 